welcome back. In Edo State, women from the 18 local government areas across different fields have been celebrating the progress they've made in their different fields in recent times. During the Edo Women's Summit, the wife of the governor, Betsy Obaseki, encouraged women to keep improving themselves for greater contribution to the society, while Governor Godwin Obaseki promised to continue supporting the women's quest for inclusion in governance. Our correspondent, Jessica Ologusere, tells us more. Color and excitement as women from different parts of Edo State assembled for the Edo Women's Summit Empowerment and Award Ceremony 2018 in Benin City, the Edo State capital. There's good reason for the high spirits here, where the focus is on women making their impact felt in the nation's efforts to keep developing. There must be a paradigm shift to change the narrative for women to a comprehensive inclusion in governance, politics and other critical sectors that will galvanize them to greatness. The March Past contest involving the 18 local government areas of the state exhibits creativity. The exertions are rewarded. But there is more. The convener of the ceremony, the wife of the Edo State Governor, Mrs. Betsy Obaseki, and her husband, Governor Godwin Obaseki, wants the women to take home. In this state, women stand as one. That's the statement we've come to make here. So we're here to celebrate ourselves and to pat one another on the back to say, very well done. And those of our women who are strong and capable, you know, their work is being seen, their work is being evident, and I know that sooner or later, women will take their positions, their rightful positions in our economy and do great things. I want to thank you and to assure you that our government is a very woman-friendly government, and we will do everything to empower you, because by empowering society. The ceremony also sees some of the women who are contributing to the progress of the state. Among them, educationalist Professor Christian Aokoji, the lady mechanic Sandra Agwebo, and musician Aito J. Robe, also known as YJ, receive awards for their work. Jessica Olubuse, Channels Television News. One problem affecting the Nigerian justice system is prison congestion due to the large number of awaiting cases and efforts are being made to decongest the prisons. And one of such is a recent release of 49 inmates across prisons in Bochi State, facilitated by the wife of the state governor, Barista Aisha Abubakar. These ex-convicts were not only allowed to walk free, but were also made to commit to a rehabilitation and empowerment program. This is the Bauchi Federal Prison Yard. It has a capacity to accommodate 500 inmates, but the facility has been overstretched in recent times. The chief judge of Bauchi State, Rabbi Umar, is here to free some inmates in order to decongest the prison. Ali Yusale has been in this prison for five years over an unresolved dispute with his brother. His case is similar to many others who are awaiting trial. We have discovered that some of the those awaiting trial, particularly in other jur jurisdictions such as Mesa, Azare, Jamari, and Nigi, are mostly civil cases. But unfortunately, we discovered that some of them were sent to prison for their inability to pay their, their outstanding debt against them. Civil societies, individuals and groups have been complementing government efforts. Recently, the wife of the Bauchi State Governor, Barista Aisha Abubakar, secured the release of 49 inmates with minor cases across the state after paying their fines. We all know that our prisons are highly congested. The school and the vocational facilities put in place in the prison have been overstretched and cannot cater for the number of inmates 
This, therefore, defeats the aims of reforming the inmates during their stay in prison. These are some of the reasons why we have embarked on a project towards assisting the prison and the prison inmates, respectively. And we emphasize the conditions attached to those that their fines have been settled. The conditions include having a guarantor who will ensure that they fulfill other conditions. The released inmates will have to undergo through a vocational training. Some of these former inmates are already undergoing training in various skills for proper integration into the society. Gambo Emmanuel, a beneficiary of this program, shares his experience. Prison is not where someone's supposed to go. Prison is like just, I don't know how I would say it, but my being there in the prison makes me to be a changed person now. I've been stealing, but now I have changed my mind to further my education. Since congestion is a major problem in most prisons in Nigeria, it is pertinent that relevant authorities work hard to address the root causes of overcrowded in prisons, which some have attributed to the delay in the justice process. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, will work to strengthen its collaboration with the United States in the establishment and use of the early warning systems in the sub-region. And the president of the ECOWAS Commission mentioned this after a meeting with the Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs for the United States of America. According to the president, the United States has collaborated with the region to establish five early warning systems and centers in five countries of the 15 member countries. And the commission is looking to take the partnership even further towards establishing the system and the centers in all 15 member countries. Now, this system, he says, will help the region in all its human endeavors, such as trade, health, agriculture, and risk factors such as terrorism. Now, let's find out what's happening in the world of business. And Anne is standing by with those stories. Thanks a lot, Melinda, and welcome to the world of business. The London Stock Exchange Group has now launched its report on African capital markets following a series of meetings over two years with its member, Africa's business leaders, policymakers and investors. This report addresses five key topics, which includes developing the green bond market for infrastructure products, attracting massive investment flows, developing offshore local currency bond markets, capital raising challenges for small and medium enterprises, and corporate information dissemination. This report, which were commissioned by London Africa Advisory Group, were produced in conjunction with stakeholders in London and across Africa, just to offer practical advice and constructive solutions for supporting the development of Africa's capital market infrastructure and increasing global investment flows for the continent. The first full trading week in the month of November has ended up by 0.23% rise in the all share index and the total value of listed equities after a series of fluctuations dominated the market this week. This has been attributed to gains from major components of the consumer goods and the oil and gas sectors against the sell offs recorded by major components of the banking, industrial goods, and the insurance sectors. The price chart of shares of UACN is the best performer for this week out of 27 advances. Mutual benefits is the worst performer on the list of 39 decliners, while the share price of 103 equities remained unchanged this week. The total volume of shares traded for this week was lower at 1.07 billion units, with over 18.19 billion naira in 14,372 transactions. And that's when you compare it to the total of 1.26 billion shares worth 20.36 billion naira, which was traded in over 15,088 transactions this week. Multilateral financial institution Afrexim Bank, in collaboration with UK-based CDC Group, has now signed a $100 million master risk participation agreement. This agreement is to help support trade facilitation right here in Africa. The deal, which was sealed in Morocco, will see the provision of unfunded risk participation by CDC, while the Afrexim Bank delivers trade finance services. Some of the expectations from Afrexim include trade confrontation and confirmation, trade guarantee, as well as irrevocable reimbursement undertakings. 
And that ends business news for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. It's back to you, Melinda. Many thanks, Anne. The launch of the National Action Plan for the Revitalization of Water Supply, Sanitation and Hygiene Sector in Nigeria and the declaration of a state of emergency in the sector by the president has brought to the fore the issues of decline in that sector. In our next report, we take a look at the water sources in Nigeria, some of the challenges facing potable water and the risk involved in water scarcity. Water is one of the most important natural resources, and Nigeria is considered to be abundantly blessed with it. The 2011 Federal Ministry of Water Resources Roadmap for Nigeria Water Sector estimates the water resources potential of the country as 267 and 92 billion cubic meters of surface and groundwater, respectively. Water supply, sanitation and hygiene services in the rural areas are unsustainable as 46% of all water schemes are non-functional. Putting this recent remark by President Muhammad Buhari side by side with the billions of cubic meters of water resources potential in the country brings to mind a line from a popular poem Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. In Nigeria's case, it's not as bad as no drop to drink, but the situation is not all pleasant. Going by figures from the Nigeria Demographic and Health Survey, NDHS 2013, 61% of households in the country have access to improved source of drinking water. So what happens to the remaining 39% of the people? And of these 61% with access, only 20% of households reported having water on their premises as compared with 25% in the 2008 NDHS. For some, it takes 30 minutes travel time or longer to obtain their drinking water, particularly in the rural areas. With clean water sources, sanitation and other hygiene issues are called to question. The risks to health are severe. Diarrhea, typhoid and cholera are top on the list of waterborne diseases. The source of drinking water is very, very important. We should ensure that we drink wholesome and quality water. And if we are not sure of the quality of the water, what we can use to boil? Boiling keep all the jams, and we are able to have um, water that we are sure will not cause illness. The National Wash Action Plan has the primary objective of ensuring that everyone living in Nigeria has access to sustainable and safely managed wash services by 2030. This is expected to be achieved through five components governance sustainability, sanitation, funding, and evaluation. For this wash revitalization plan to yield good fruits, governments at all levels must move beyond plans to concrete actions that are measurable and time-bound so as to reach the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals 6. Still ahead on the news at 10, we'll be discussing this water emergency issue. And to look at this issue with us is the national president of the Association of Medical Officers of Health in Nigeria, Dr. Yahaya Desu. Plus, new Formula One champion Lewis Hamilton takes pole for Brazilian Grand Prix ahead of Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel. And that will be on Sports News. Join us again.